Hey, what's up my fellow gamers? Emerald Viking Prime here with the final episode of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Let's Play. In the last episode, we actually pretty much finished the final duel in this entire game. Really fun episode, I actually had a pretty good time doing it. Somewhat challenging, but in the end it was fun. In this episode, we are going to be doing the final two DLC duels in this campaign. I kind of want to check something real quick, because I know I've done the DLC duels in this campaign. Just to have. Right. And uh, then I'm going to be doing the first duel from the Arc V. There's only one duel and the rest are DLC, so that's why I'm actually not going to be doing them, is because I don't want to spend extra money on the DLC. I kind of already got pretty much most of the DLC in this game, except for the extra duels. I just don't want to do that. Too much money, guys. I know, I know. So we're playing as the guy that uses the wind up monsters? Oh god. Yeah, the DLC tools are Bronk. Bronkstone. Is that really what his English name is? Are you serious? I mean, it's not the worst name. Bronk is actually a decent name, but just... Gen such a generic last name, I cannot believe it. <laughs> but yeah, the DLC duels are pretty pretty bad, or uh, pretty tough, so I'm probably not going to do like multiple attempts. And you obviously know what I'm doing. Exceed something. Alright, so if this is one of those cards is a trap card, I could, I do have a uh, Calm the Haunted, so I could easily just summon another Utopia, so it's not going to be a big loss if I, anything bad happens. I got the fuck on you. I'll read it a little bit later. Okay, uh, when this card is flipped face up, select one card on the field and inflict 500 damage to the, its controller. Okay. When this card is destroyed but bounced into the graveyard, you can special summon one Mecha Bunny from your deck in face down defensive position. Pretty good card. Pretty good card effect. And of course, you have to show the opponent, so it's not like you're cheating or anything like that. That's a good card. Decent card effect, actually. You know, I just said that like three times in a row, literally. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind having some of those in a machine deck. Pretty nice card. You're going to do a card. Uh, what cards do? I don't want to use that quite yet, and I have no point to use this yet, so I'm good. How much do you want to bet that's another Mecha Bunny? <laughs> okay, now that I say Mecha, it always reminds me of that one character, that one boss from, uh, what game was that? Okay. I'm just gonna say the boss. There's a game that I can't remember the name of, even though it's a pretty popular game for some people. The boss is Mecha Hitler. If you know that game, let me know in the comments below. It's just, that's what it reminds me of. I just forgot for a second. It's like Wolfenstein, I think that's what it's called. Uh, 
this is good. Um, because this card's effect is... Well, you control a green gadget, red gadget, and yellow gadget. This card gains 3,000 attack points. So I could use this to bring that card into my hand. And if it gets destroyed, well, I have this. So... Yeah. So I'm going to summon green gadget, or red gadget. No, I don't want to use the effect of red gadget. No, I don't want to use the chain effect. And it lets me bring a yellow gadget into my hand. And yellow gadget's effect is very similar, except instead of another yellow gadget, it brings a green gadget to my hand, and green gadget's effect is the same but with red gadget, so each one could bring one of them into the, your hand when summoned. They're a decent combination of cards if you have the right kind of deck for it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... I don't really have the ability to exceed summon, so... No, I didn't want to in the first place. So, since I know what this card is... Yes, I know I take some, what, some damage, but, you know. Oh my god, is that... Is that really another Mecha Hitler? I mean, Mecha Bunny. Okay, Cobalt Hedgehog. Oh crap! I forgot about Cobalt Hedgehog's effect! What do you have a Cobalt Hedgehog? That card's good for a Synchro deck, not a Exceed deck. Unless we have like a level 2 in there, or rank 2. Um, that brings me to something that, in case if you're confused, monsters have levels. If their star chips are to the right, they are levels. If the star chips are to the left, they are ranks. Two different things. Pretty much only monsters that have ranks are exceed monsters, so it's not too confusing. But if you're confused by that, that's what it means. So basically, if you have like a rank 5 monster on the field, you could actually attack the opponent, even though if he has a card that says something like, uh, all level 4 monsters can attack. But ranks can, because ranks and levels are two different things, technically speaking. Just say. Of course I could be wrong by that, but, you know, that's what I think. That's what I know. <laughs> Who the heck, how the heck am I supposed to know? I'm not like an expert, I don't play tournaments. I've wanted to go to a tournament before, and actually I have when I was a lot younger, but that was just for fun, and that wasn't like a really big tournament, that was just like an in, that was just a small little thing one of my local card shops was doing, and there was not a lot of people. That card shop was pretty unknown to a lot of people, so there was like probably six other people doing the, there, uh, for the tournament. I did pretty good actually in that tournament. I got like, I, I think I won like three or four, three duels and then I lost, which was surprising because I didn't even use a real deck. I used a structure deck I just bought that day, <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. So okay, see green gadget. So green gadget is your, I think your most offensive. He has the most attack but the lowest defense. Yellow Gadget's your balance has pretty much the same attack and defense as, you know, well, you can see. And uh, Red Gadget is pretty decent, but has higher attack, has higher defense. So in my opinion, Red Gadget's probably the best because he's both the best of both worlds and he could be pretty useful. So you obviously know I'm not gonna be using um, No Entry, which is a decent decent card, if you ask me, my friends. Okay, so let's just do an all-out attack. And since Utopia, I don't mind losing a little bit of attack power, I'm gonna attack the Utopia, because I don't want to risk a high defense monster. I mean, I know it just has 800 defense, but who knows, it could have had like 300,000 billion defense, I don't know. No monster can have that much. Unless it had like effect that says this monster can't be destroyed by battle, then it basically means it has infinite defense. <laughs> So, oh, okay, well, technically speaking, we're the first to get attack damage on the opponent. Because the only damage we've taken so far was effect damage and not direct monster damage. If you know what I mean. Oh, god, I was about to do a Bill Cosby thing. <laughs> it's so much funner to do Bill Cosby references before you knew what kind of person he was. Oh, man. Honestly, though, I'm not really the biggest Bill Cosby fan in the first place, so I'm not really that mad about what he did. Well, I am. I am super mad about what he did. And what the flip are you doing, dude? 
Did you realize that? I think he did a... I think he did know what he just did. <laughs> Alright. So let's summon Green Gadget. Wow, we still have more gadgets in our deck. And due to the fact that this mofo, um, special summon this card in defense position as an effect monster with 3,000, with zero attack and 2,000 defense. Pretty good. This card can still be a trap card. This start, this card is also still a trap card. This card is also still a trap card. That seems like it's misworded somehow. Will you control green gadget, red gadget, and yellow gadget? This card gains 3,000 attack. So, this card I can't really use quite yet because of its stupid effect, but you know, still better than nothing. Okay, so, what level is this thing? Level 4? <laughs> well, imagine that, a level 4 monster with 3,000 attack. Doesn't You don't see that every day. You see a lot with like around 2,000, but eh, not really 3,000. Even though that's technically a trap card step. You know what I mean. Okay, I would exceed summon, but only monsters I can use is this guy and these gadgets, and I don't really want to do that, because I would basically waste this, so I'm going to wait on that, and I'm just going to attack. It's probably baiting me, which is, you know, understandable. I don't even know what the hell card wants to be activated like it popped up like a thousand times do you want to activate this do you want to activate that do you want to activate this blah 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 um highest attack would be green gadget another mega bunny i knew you had one of those left must have been in your hand and uh well since i only have two monsters left on the field What card wants to be activated so badly? I don't need to activate any cards, dude! Hey, if you're attacking any monster, can it please be Red Gadget? <laughs> uh. Kicking this guy's butt. I mean, I know Mecha Bunny's kicking my butt too, but... I mean, I have... His life points could fit into mine, basically, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> a yellow gadget. Okay, you can attack two of them now. Actually, three, because one of them, because yellow could bring me a green gadget. Alright, so, now that everything's ready, I can now attack with him. But before that, I'm going to be setting red gadget in defense mode. Because, just in case, since he has the lowest, since he has a pretty high defense, um... He stays in attack because his defense is crap, and I'll keep this guy in attack also for extra power. What happened? What can I... Oh, okay. <laughs> that explains it. So, there's no... Basically any of the monsters I have except for Yellow Gadget can finish him off, so I don't really have a real reason to... ...not attack with Utopia. This DLC duel did go on for a little while. Oh, this, okay, there it is. Turned. I know I keep doing this weird turning thing, but just I, my webcam is on my uh, behind me. <laughs> Not behind me, but my webcam picture is blocking the turn counter. That's what I'm basically trying to say. Oh boy, more call of the haunted, huh? I still won, dude. You do realize that Call of the Hunter doesn't block the freaking thing.
The dude had dark mist? <laughs> I didn't even... He didn't even get the chance. Get the chance. Wow, cool. Probably Not a bad card. Not a bad card. So, uh, Roots of the Problem. So that was the DLC duel number one. So let's do DLC duel number two. Are we going to fight him again? A new world of chaos. I mean, come on. So the dude's number is actually, that's actually called number 96. Eh, better than number 69. Is there a card that's really, Exceed Monsters, that's really called number 69? Please tell me. I really want to know. It's not because of the joke, it's just, it, I don't think they used it because they knew what that meant to a lot of immature people like I am. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, okay, we're playing Yuma now, so we have access to some decent cards. Bad. Wow. Except I don't really remember what burning light does. Sorts of burning light do. Wow. I gotta say, I got a pretty decent freaking setup here. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Okay. We're in business. Will you control no monsters? Monsters your opponent controls cannot declare attacks. If you control a monster or your opponent controls has five or more cards in their hand, destroy this card. Nice! I'm gonna wait to activate this for later, of course. Voice crack beyond. Voice voice crack beyond. Voice crack central. You can target one utopian monster you control. Equip this, car, equip this monster from your hand to your side, or your side of the field to that target. It gains 1,000 attack. Well, this card is equipped to the monster. That monster can attack all monsters your opponent controls each time. Wow! That is a fantastic card, and pretty awesome artwork as well. Holy crap. No, I don't want to activate Goblinburg, I want to activate your mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, thought about that joke so long ago, too. <laughs> where I made another mom joke like that earlier in the series. That, or I was talking to myself. I kind of talked to myself way too much. You could say I should be in a loony bin, but I'm not. So, here I am. <laughs> so we'll make Utopia Ray. I seriously hope, I seriously wish they had at least one other Utopia Ray in this freaking game, or deck. And my favorite card in that weird southern draw, <laughs> this card. This card is really, this card. <laughs> the card I'm using is pretty good because I think it basically negates the effect, or uh, not, yeah, basically negates the effects of all other face up cards on the field besides the monster that you're summoning. So, yeah, and this card's effect is also really good because it makes it so no spell or trap cards could be activated until the end of the damage step. Just so you know, that effect only applies to cards that are currently on the field, so it's not going to work for most new cards. So. And as you can see, since these were face down, they're not affected either, so yeah, you get the point. Heck damn it, come on. Alright. Oh, you bitch. Wow. <laughs> okay, I gotta be careful. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, inflict 500 points damage to your opponent. Uh, okay, well. That's good. Because I get some damage off, so. He knew the effect, he knew that I would have been able to just totally spam that, so he definitely just quit right when he did. Giant Germ, in my opinion, I thought it was a much worse card than I expect than I thought. I swear to god, I thought it did way more damage than just 500. Like, I thought it did like damage equal to the damage your opponent takes and stuff. Just, wow. All I need are two more level 4s and I can easily just... Someone another one of these dudes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gonna be another giant germ. Yeah. <laughs> How was I not surprised? I can't attack anymore since there's no monsters in the field, but I got some pretty good damage off on him, so... You know. It's good to get those monsters off the field. Check card. Or spell card. It could be either one. Either or. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is one of my favorite monsters, actually. I mean, not in the terms of effect or design or anything, but just he is a decent effect and he's just a pretty simple card to. pretty easy card to summon. Have you seen the effect of my Utopia Ray? Actually, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, I can't say no. So. Yeah. This time I'll say no, because it's kind of pointless. Thanks to this, I could easily attack pretty much all my opponent's monsters at least once. <laughs> that is weird turn tuning into this video now. Alright. Bacon Saber? What is this card doing in this? During either player's battle phase, while well, this card is. Well, the. Well, an attack is occurring, you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate the attack. You can only use the effect of Pick and Save once per duel. Oh, I get it. <laughs> save your bacon? It's like a, uh, what's the word? It's like a saying, basically saving your life, you know, that kind of thing. Save your bacon. I'll just set this face down so it can get destroyed. <laughs> Pretty cool effect. Pretty funny one at that. Plus, I love the artwork in that card. But enough of... Sorry. <laughs> Enough of, uh, that. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So I just need to get 400 damage on him and I win this duel. Which is awesome. <laughs> well... Unfortunately for you, my friend, you've lost the duel. Seriously, I've never had that easy of a time with the DLC duel, ever. Like, the DLC duels in this game are tough, are pretty tough. Cherry and Mato? Well, is it because he's an inmate? I get it now, Cherry and Mato. Okay, it's supposed to be like a, a wordplay on tomato and inmate. <laughs> evil hero, infernal. How does that guy have an evil hero? Wow, holy crap. <clears throat> so that was pretty fun. And last duel would be the first one for Arc V. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't plan on getting the rest of the DLC for this game. It's just too much money and It's just for like each DLC pack is five dollars. It comes with two duels. It's stupid This is actually new to me, so I need to <laughs> I never used a uh, Pelgium, Pelgium, whatever you call it
What? Why the cannon? The cannon's like the coolest one. I want to. Like I was like all separated, <laughs> all the words and letters and stuff. Since it's a basically a robot, he's the strongest one. <laughs> Why did you want me to summon a monster with four hundred attack? I think it's freaking one of the best cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Then again, this is actually a um, tutorial duel, so it's meant to go like this. attack power. My god. That's probably one of my favorite designs. It's a monster right there. Lance... I can't even pronounce that thing's name. You know it's a good monster when you can't pronounce the name for shit. <laughs> this guy had a pretty classic deck. Go for, the light. Go for the lightning? Man, I haven't used that card in god knows how long. <laughs> My god. So I could just do the duel normally again, but uh, I don't really want to. So, that's... <laughs> no, that was the easiest 100% completion in the series I've ever had. <laughs> that was Yu-Gi-Oh! Like Steve the Duelist Let's Play. Um, starting Wednesday, I do plan on going through the, some of the bonus features in the game and stuff like that. But I'm not going to do it this episode just because I don't really want this to go on for too long. So, um... On Wednesday, we'll be getting to the bonus features. Should be a two-part series, so it shouldn't be that bad. So technically, this isn't the final episode, but, you know. It just is for story-wise, single-player campaign. And I don't plan on doing the multiplayer just because uh, I'm not really good with multiplayer and I haven't really made a good deck at all, so, yeah. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed the video guys, I really do, and please subscribe and let me know in the comments if you're watching this on my YouTube channel or whatever, leave suggestions for PS4 games I should try out for our next Let's Play. Um, next Monday I'm going to be starting up my GTA Let's Play once more, and uh, hopefully finish that, and I will have tons of free time to do a Let's Play after that one. <laughs> so once I'm finished with that, I plan on starting another series. I have a good idea what I want to do myself, but you know what, I'll stop keeping you. Sorry for talking on and on. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.